When you're using the prediction and training SDKs, you need to have the prediction and training keys in order to perform all the actions within the custom vision service. Getting these keys in the code, however, can be a little bit tricky, mainly since you don't want to hard code the keys straight in the code because anyone who views the code can have access to your API keys and then they can abuse them. So I'm going to take a step back here from this video and show you three different ways in which you can get your keys from another location instead of just hard coding them. The first two are two ways in which they can be read from a config file. The third is using the Azure Key Vault service to allow Azure to store the keys and then how they can be retrieved from the service. Now I'm in a Visual Studio .NET Core console project. The only thing I've added here is the keys.json file, which has some dummy training and prediction keys. And note that in order for the program to read this file, it needs to be marked to copy to the output directory. I also have a class called keys where I can store the different keys into. And each of the three solutions I'll present will use this class. Now the first solution is to read the keys from the config file using a stream reader. First, I'll new up a new instance of the keys class. Then within a using statement, I'll create a stream reader instance and pass in the file name. Within the using statement, I can just call reader.readToEnd. And that gives us a string that we can use to parse into the properties. But to make it easier, I can bring in the newtonsoft.json package and use that to deserialize it into the keys object. Then I can just assign that to the keys instance. So running this, I get the correct keys from the file. All right, in the next solution, I'll use the configuration builder that you can get in .NET Core. Before we can though, a few NuGet packages are needed. The Microsoft.extensions.configuration, the Microsoft.extensions.configuration.json, and the Microsoft.extensions.configuration.binder packages. And with all of those installed, I can create a new instance of the configuration builder class. I can call a set base path extension method to the current directory it's running in. And due to the configuration.json package, I can add the JSON file and pass in the file name. Next, I need to call the build method on the builder and save that into a variable. Now from here, I can pull the keys by accessing the data from the configuration variable and then give it the key that's used in the JSON file. But with the configuration.binder package, I can bind the data from the configuration into a class. So with that, I can new up a new instance of the keys class and on the configuration variable, call the bind method and then pass in the keys instance. Now from here, I can access the keys directly from this class. Uh, and my last solution is to use Azure Key Vault to store the keys and retrieve them from there when we need them. I'm going to move over to the Azure portal to show just how easy it is to get going with the Azure Key Vault service. So I'll click to create a new resource and then search for Key Vault. And real quick, I'll fill in all of the standard fields, such as the name of the key vault, the resource group to put it under, and the location it goes in, and then just click to create it. Now it doesn't take very long to deploy, and when it does, I can go to it. Then I can start adding the API keys just by going to secrets on the left navigation of the key vault instance. Then I'll click to generate so I can add them manually. And I'll just give them a name and the API keys, API keys value. So this one would be for the prediction key. And I'll do the same for the training key. So now that we have the key fault set up, I'll head back into Visual Studio. But before we can get started with the code, once again, I'll need some NuGet packages. 
Microsoft.Azure.KeyVault and Microsoft.Azure.Services.App Authentication. And to make this a bit easier, I'll create a constant string that holds the URL for the key vault. I can get that back in the portal in the overview section where it's called DNS name. So now I'll create an instance of the Azure Service Token Provider class. Then I'll create an instance of the key vault client. And this takes in an instance of the key vault client that authentication callback class. And that takes in the token provider that key vault token callback property as a parameter. With all that set up, I can now use the client and call get secret async. And I pass in the URL as the first parameter and the name of the secret I want, the training key, to get as, as the second parameter. And since this is an async method, I'll just call the result property on it to make it synchronous. And I'll do the same thing for the prediction key. Now that I have the keys, I can just create an instance of the keys class and fill in the properties so I can access this class whenever I need to get access to the keys. All right, I hope this video helped out in different ways in which you can access API keys so you, you can perform your work with a custom vision service or whatever service you need to access that has an API key. If you like this video and wish to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.